Hello everybody, back here again for another vlog a day. And today is Tuesday the 5th, and today was a lovely, beautiful day to be alive. Windy a little bit, but overall, not too bad. Um, got this morning, um, got up, got around a little bit, get dressed um, to do my run, I get my run in, got in the hot tub for a little bit. Um, just got my muscles trying to stretch out a little while on the boat here. Running laps around the track um, always kind of sucks because it's just, people get in your way and stuff, and it's also like, they say six laps, but it's actually closer to seven laps to make a mile. So you just keep running around this tiny little circle over and over and over again. So I got that done though. I'm um, gonna take care of. I didn't want to run on the on the, um, on the island because then I have to get back to the um, boat to shower and stuff, and it's just kind of pain in the butt. And I probably could have just taken running gear and like went and ran around the beach area and then showered off the beach and came back. But it is what it is. So got my running. So I try and get it done before Karen gets up. Uh, just makes my day um, clear for whatever she wants to do. So at that point, I don't have to worry about making her feel like she's waiting for me and whatnot. So get that taken care of, um, head back down. She gets up, falling gets around. Um, we head out, grab some breakfast. And the first time on this boat was um, bad. It was bad. It was the second sailing out of Miami. The crew were confused. There was a lot of issues, a lot of things wrong. Um, we went ahead and um, had no luck with like the galley. Like every single time we ordered food in the galley, it was wrong. And I couldn't just stand there. like, I want that, that, and that, and that. Nope. We had to tell somebody else they had to go get it, bring it to us. It was, it was a giant pain in the butt. Every time it was on this boat, the trip's been perfect every day except today. They screwed up everything repeatedly. And just the simple stuff like we ordered, you know, ordered breakfast, ordered an add on of like sausage, bacon, whatever stuff. Never stood up, ordered coffee, didn't bring milk because normally you ask for a coffee, they go, Do you want milk? Do you want sugar stuff? And they didn't. They, my wife said, You know, do you want coffee? And we assume because now we've been here like five days and stuff. Like, there are a lot of times, a lot of people knowing us, a lot of people recognizing this is what you want, this is what you kind of want, this is what you kind of want. And she shows up with coffee and it's like a half a cup of coffee, not a full cup. No cream, no sugar, no nothing. I'm like, You're going out, like, you're walking around a lot. You could just have the cream and milk thing right there. And do want it? You can ask them if they say yes. They say no. Take it back, put it in the kitchen. Not the end of the world. You're, there's literally more people on the boat, more staff than there is uh, people on this boat right now for sailors. So there's more workers than there are customers at the moment. So you have time. Not like you're busy. Not like there's a lot going on. So went ahead. Um, we had like 2,400, I think, last time we were on the boat. And there's 670 or something like that. I guess, I think it's under 700 people. So it's a big, big difference. But today, was just, I don't know, they picked up a new crew at Boomi. I don't know what the hell, but it was off. Like everything was bad. So we went, it's like, okay, fine, whatever. So we got the boat, we head out. Um, got a late start, it was what it is. We were at a big deal. We go out, um, leave port, jump on the trolley, um, head over. And last time also, it stopped at the Fisherman's Village. It stopped at a golf cart rental place. There's multiple golf cart rentals, that's what I stopped at. It stops at the casino, the golf cart rental place. And then it stops at, um, I went to the last one, there's a third one there. And then it stops at the beach, cool. Get in there and stuff this time, and the guy drives straight to the beach. And I'm like, damn, we drive half the way across the island. And then we get there, and like, hey, we wanted to go get the wrong carts. Yeah. You know? He's like, oh, okay. And I'm like, why not just, you're right there, you just whatever. But so the way back, he stops in there and stuff. It doesn't stop anything else, stops there. There's a last thing about rentals or something, too. But like long term vacation rentals. So it is what it is. So we headed back, um, basically, get dropped off, rent a golf cart. And didn't think about his time, but the guy gave me a golf cart without a back seat. Which two sucks because one we can't get people rides because what we did last time we planned doing this time so we called the field we see us hey you need a ride holler us we'll give you a ride it's not a big island it'll take long to get places and two uh, I can't back up to the um, ocean and sit on the back seat the padded seat and enjoy my um, cigar so I was like damn that sucks but I didn't think about it until we were like already at the uh, ocean down at the end so I was like okay not a big deal um, we'll make the best of it not a problem so I went ahead and said to heck with it. Just chilled out there. Um, we ended up running into some other people we saw on the boat. Um, so, uh, Kevin, Richard's Kevin and his wife, Stephanie, um, talking to them. They had met another couple on the boat. I'm not sure that could or where they met on the boat, but they were on their golf cart together, the four of them. We were all chatting, having a good time, um, BS and stuff. Saw the blowhole, the water come up out. It's really cool. It's like a port. Like it's just, when the wave comes in, it crashes, and it shoots up in the air. It's really cool. Um, 
my wife wanted to get some water plants. We found an artist that takes water from different parts. It could be tap water, it could be ocean water, it could be pond water, it could be whatever, rain water, whatever it is. Um, and then she turns into art We're using inks and dyes and oils and stuff, whatever. And then it makes, I believe they're prints, I think they're digital prints of it. And it's pretty cool. It's like under a microscope, I think, or something. I'm not exactly sure exactly what it is, but you put the coordinates on it. So my wife wanted um, blowhole water. I'm like, look, the blowhole blows up, lands on that rock, and then it eventually just rolls right back down to the ocean. She's like, no, I kind of want it to be like light, like moving blowhole water. And I'm like, you do realize we're trying to fill up a film caster, a little tiny thing with water that I got to try and fill up here without getting destroyed with like water. And she's like, no, don't get wet, but try and get it for me. And I'm like, what the fuck am I supposed to not get wet and get this for you? Like, there's no way this makes sense. So it's like, okay, cool, whatever. Um, yeah, no big deal. So I lean down and I'm trying to time it. And the thing is, it's, it's ocean wave. You'll have one come in, blows water up to almost the surface. You have one come in, blows water up, an inch and a half, two inches below the surface. You have one come up, blows water four feet in the air. And then you have one come up and a two inches below the surface. And I'm just like, oh my God, like, I can't tie it. So I'm trying to listen to the sounds, trying to figure out what's coming at what speed. <clears throat> Shot my hand there, messed, got a little wet. And no big deal. Shot my hand there, missed, got a little wet. Then I heard a big one coming and I said, you know what? Done with it, don't care. Just stuck my whole arm in there, scooped the water out, got my almost, you know, not full, but full enough um, beaker of water. And it was just right side, just wrench soaked through. The one thing I was smart enough, I did take my cell phone out because I didn't want it falling down in my hole. Um, even though it's an awkward case, I don't know how to go about getting it back out of there. I don't know how long it takes for the tide to drag it out to me. Even if I went into water trying to come back up underneath it to it, I don't know how long it would take. So I was like, okay, cool, whatever. So, got that done. I'm now soaking wet. Not a big deal. Yeah, dry quick. It's windy as hell. It's pretty windy in the bottom of the island. So, we're hanging around, um, having a good time there. From there, um, we basically head back. They decided we were talking there for quite a while. We saw the shipwreck. We saw all kind of fun stuff. From there, uh, they said they wanted to go eat at the crab sh the conch shack. So, we agreed to follow them over there because I'm not really sure like, where they're, which conch shack they're talking about. And their golf cart is slower than ours, but he knows where he's going. So, we follow them over, we get there, uh, we're chilling out, we're having, I think we had um, conch fritters. Uh, he had the conch fritters, he had the uh, fried um, conch and fries, which the fried conch and fries is like hammered out, it tastes, it looks just like clam. And they said it tasted like clam. And we had the conch fritters and there were three bucks for like a little, like I said, well you get a burger sized styrofoam container in, there were three bucks, I'm like shit yeah. And then a Coca-Cola was two bucks, my wife wanted a Coca-Cola, it's worth five dollars of this, who cares. And the fried ones with the fries was $15. I understand it's a lot more work. They have to bat, hammer it out and stuff. And they have to fry it, but it's going to fry quicker. And it's not that much more work. And there can't be it's probably the same amount of food. Like, it's not that much more of the conch. And it was like, oh, I'm like, I'm going to take the conch first. I'm really not a conch fan. I'm not, the, I'm not the guy who loves, you know, eating conch. And the fries were just garbage, frozen fries. They were nothing great at all. I was like, oh, thank God I didn't pay 15 bucks for that. So I would have been a little bit disappointed. But it is what it is. Um, we had that. We basically all chatted and talked. Um, we um, They wanted some talk shells. And the restaurant's like, yeah, take them. There's no big deal. Learn about it. Take a bunch of the stuff. Whatever you guys want to do. So then they picked up the ones they wanted. And we headed out. They went their way. We went our way. They were dropping their cart back off and doing what else they're doing. We drove around the cart the rest of, you know, for a while. Explored the high road, the low road. At every time, told them, hey, you guys need to see the high road. And they're like, where's that? And I'm like, oh, I guess we'll follow you. And I'm like, oh, shit, okay. So I'm heading back, and I didn't realize, I thought I had turned. Because I was like, no, no, go all the way back to the, that lookout point. And it's right there. I'm like, it's not. Went down, saw the um, the high road, first road up. Shocked to myself a little bit, had a good time. And then they headed back, and we just hung out there. I finished my, you know, just continued smoking my cigar at that point and just drove on the high road. We saw all kinds of stuff. We saw a little spot we think the whole church was, saw some lizards. We really just hung out, just walked out, saw the, the native you know, area a little more and stuff, and really had a good time. Um, saw where an iguana had been hit on the road that maybe he's at. But um, from there, basically went back, um, drove down to the beach club, which is the movie beach club that works with um, Virgin. And I guess apparently we got there, you can't park in the lot, you gotta park on the side of the lot for liabilities or insurance. So we walked over, I forgot to lock my card up, which you put a, like a chain, bike chain on it. So they can't turn the steering wheel all the way. Um, went ahead from there, walked over, hung out, saw some of the friends again, chat there, buddy and stuff. Um, some of them were going back to the hotel, some of them were staying longer, so on and so forth. And then um, grabbed herself some food. My wife got the um, ribs, which was actually surprisingly pretty good. Um, a 
couple other things, some fruit salads and stuff and whatnot. And we got the rum cake. The rum cake, okay, I'm not really a rum cake guy, but it was good for rum cake. I'm just not really that big of a rum cake guy. So, chilled out there, hung out at the beach a little while. Karen decided she wanted to, I uh, said, so were you swimming? She said, oh yeah, we're swimming. We took all these towels and stuff. She never swam. We didn't see swim. Going down the water, she decided to lay down, take a nap. Um, found the shadiest spot we could find. It wasn't a lot of good shade there, so we found a spot, a little bit of shade, had to move some chairs around, some monitors around. Chilled out, I had a cigar. Um, we got back in the water, she was laying down and stuff. She started just trying to nap off, and she get woke up off and on, but she was getting rest, that's all it really counts. And then um, from there, we hung around for a bit, and then decided it was time to go. It was, we we're gonna head back, and then she's like, oh, we gotta get back, get showered, um, get time for dinner. And then she's like, or do you just wanna stay here? And I'm like, I don't care. Like, I, we, we partly, we need to kind of go through, we made plans with some other people on the boat that we met that um, we need to go, it's like, hey, we did say we're going to dinner with you. And it was, it's a weird, like, um, Korean um, restaurant, barbecue place. You all sit around and kind of communal dine in the process. And I didn't want to be the person that's like, oh, yeah, we'll go. And they make plans to take them going somewhere else. They didn't really want to sit with complete strangers. So um, but they just wanted somebody else to the table they knew. I'm like, yeah, we'll be that people. So we went back. And we did turn our golf cart in, hopped on the tram, caught the way back to the boat. Everything was good. Got our showers. Um, I had my wife go on ahead as I was finishing up my cigars. I was getting to the port. One. I had conch shells with a thought my ear may not let me on with and two i was like whatever and stuff and i wanted her to go up and get a shower because i'm just gonna sit in the room like an extra you know 15 minutes while she showers i'm like just go up i'll meet you there so i was on the dock i didn't want to like send her off on her own kind of thing but i sent her out in there and she uh, texted me and said hey they're taking conch shells away from everybody so i'm like okay cool whatever i'll tell them you know so i basically said hey we got them here at this place it's a destined spot and you're on the tour the thing and stuff blah blah what's the deal and da 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 and she was just like, so she helped me back there for a lot. She calls me trying to ask some questions and whatever and whatnot. Didn't get any answers, it made sense. So I had to leave the conch shells, which I didn't care. I had one conch shells. Anyway. My wife wanted the conch shells. So, but I had three and I, I knew everybody else had lost theirs already. So I thought, well, shit, if I get my three in, and there was three couples there that were all one. My wife kept one there, two could each have one as well. We after we kind of snuck one in past the authorities and stuff and whatnot. So who knows, but it is what it is. There's a tiny part of me that wants to go buy a conch shell because you can buy them like anywhere like flea markets and shit, and then bring one with me on the tour next time in July. Be like, no, 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 I bought this in Daytona. Like, this was came from Daytona Flea Market. Here's the video of me buying it. I get to take it back. I brought it here. I get to take it back with me kind of thing to see what I say. But who knows? So I went ahead, um, got back in, got my shower. Uh, didn't keep my conch shells. Didn't care. Went down, decided to go for dinner. Everything was good there. Uh, we chilled out. Had a great time. The other couple at our table, um, the couple we were meeting with, we agreed to meet with, they actually met them on the rum tour, I think it was, the couple days ago or stuff. So they actually had met them before and whatnot, so they kind of knew them and felt a little bit better. And it was definitely a four-person conversation. Most of the other couple weren't really interacting with us as much, but they were quite a bit older than we were, um, so that kind of plays into it a little bit. And it was a, that it, we weren't we weren't the, the right demographic. Like, it would not have been the set of table we'd set them at. I think those people would have had more fun even by themselves or with a different group, but it is what it is. I think partly they got there first and then they kind of didn't know it was a slow turn out. So I think it's that whole thing. I'm not really sure they can pick them up for what group. So, but they seem to have fun. Uh, the one thing I did get a little bit upset with is we had like, we, uh, they cooked squid, octopus, and everything stuff, and they, the shrimp, and they just left an entire plate set there of shredded octopus. And uh, it's just like, what? Come on. Like, I would have happily eaten your octopus. You guys don't eat seafood at all. And I think he's like, oh yeah, we don't eat seafood at all. And I'm like, could have told that you know that guy right there with the mask on and that does a little work to do all the cooking. We could have told him and he could have just passed over to us and split it up a little more and we could have happily eaten it or whatever. Now just have it cook it and throw it away as I'm watching, which is the best octopus I've ever eaten. It was cooked so well. So yeah, so we had that. Um, from there we headed back down to the room, kind of just you know stuff and whatnot. We were trying to figure out we had a um, oh well, as we're trying to pay for a drink. They um, went to tap my wife's um, band, which is how you pay for drinks, and it came up and says Amanda. And Amanda was sitting next to my wife there, and I'm like, no. And man's like, what the hell? She's that happened to us last night too, and da, 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 whatever. I'm like, so if you're a little drunk, you're like, yeah, whatever, who cares? And now man's got charged for my wife's drinks, which is not what we want to do. So we started looking at our own, our own bill, and we got charged for drinks that weren't ours as well. So we went down to complain, like, this was like, this, we didn't buy nothing at 1.32 a.m. You know, it's not, it didn't happen. So when they took them off, they didn't know how to take them off. They're trying back and forth. They put them onto my side of the bill, a lot of my wife's, so we could still track, because we're trying to burn through uh, onboard credit that we don't have used up yet. So we're like, screw it, we're gonna start buying drinks. And we should have just started buying drinks for other people and stuff too, whatever kind of thing would have been easier. But I didn't think of it. And we tried to get like the, um, the duty free shops and stuff. That we'll spend some money there. We had like a hundred bucks left to spend. And it was like $102.08, whatever, or 80 cents. And they were all 
all showed up. I'm like, what the fuck? It's not that late. Like, how can it be this late? And it'd be there. And I'm like, screw it. So we went down and found a couple different bars. And of course, we hit the hot tub because we had some like, people in the group were going to post the hot tub with us tonight. Nobody showed up for that. So we're like, okay, maybe it's too late. But who knows? I didn't care. So we left the hot tub. We asked one of the oh, guys, hey, can you get us drinks from here? So the guy's like, I don't know. They don't have anything, blah, blah. So he said, I can go get something, bring it back. And they're done with anything. Um, basically, I think sweet, I guess. Like nothing, um, nothing frozen. No strawberry daiquiris, no pina coladas, no nothing. Nothing that makes you feel like you're on a ship or in the Caribbean. Nothing like that. No Bahama Mamas, nothing. The Bahamas, it'd be nice, but yeah. So we basically went ahead and held it. Um, I can't remember what they brought us, something, ginger ale and something. Drank those, we're like, okay, no big deal. Got out, headed up, uh, looking for something else to do. Ended up finding a um, great little bar called Sit Bar. It's out by the Red Room. Um, beautiful place. Uh, great guy named Eugene. He's from the Ukraine. Eugene's the closest translation there is to his name. That's how he ended up with Eugene, which is ironic. Um, the whole thing we were talking and stuff, and I said, I don't want, I want something fruity. I don't give a shit. Kind of thing. I want like, I, I'm like, what the hell? And I'm like, you know what? Maybe, I want an apple teeny. Because I hear people make fun of how apple teeny is like this, like wussy drink kind of thing. Never had one. So he makes it because it's not really, it's not really sweet. It's not really that weak. So, uh, so he was actually pretty strong. And I said, I just, who cares? Make it more. If it sucks, I'll throw it away. I'm trying to burn through some credit here. So we started burning through our credit. And we were buying drinks and stuff. We had a drink called the Double Asian. We had a, I don't know, Prospector, I think, or something. We had to run stuff. And most, all of them were okay. And I'm like, they weren't great. The, the Double Asian was pretty good. Um, I liked it. I basically drank through. I should have tasted a few and just like chucked them out or gave them away. And I kept drinking them stuff, like whatever stuff, to the point that I got drunk. I was, I was really drunk. Um, as drunk as I've been since I was 17 years old, I guarantee you, I'm 46, by the way. So as drunk as I've been since I was um, 17 years old, and my wife was drinking stuff too, and she was also drunk. Um, I allow myself to get a little more giggly, a little more fun, like as if I'm being more playful. When something happens, like I get straightened up. But I know I'm drunk, but I'm, I'm all right. Kind of thing. I don't. I'm not the guy who's like when I see I'm doing rude things, I, I can't stop. I'm not a dude. So I basically we get done with our drinks, we take our last two drinks with us. It was after midnight. Um, the guy's like, I can't serve drinks after midnight. And I'm like, you didn't give us a chance for a last call. That's not right. So he says, you're correct. I did not give you a chance for a last call. So he agreed to make um, all four of us. There was a couple over there talking. Um, he agreed to make all four of us um, one more drink. It was good. Um, we headed out from there. We walked around. Um, we got back to the room. My um, lovely bride decided she wanted pizza. She wanted something in her stomach to, I assume, absorb alcohol or whatever. So I was like, okay. I don't know what else you get. We try to do the room service thing where it delivers your room. Pay for it. I don't care. I get credit to burn. I got nothing. I got nothing. I don't worry about it. Who gives a shit? I'm going to throw away money anyway because I don't use it. I can't use it. I'll throw it away. So I'm like, okay, cool, whatever. So we head out. I'm like, fuck it. I'm like, you stay here. I'll get pizza. It takes a while to make pizza. They make good pizza, but it takes a while. I'm like, can I just at least order the goddamn pizza? But I think they probably don't do that because they know there's going to be a bunch of people that order it and never show up to get it and so on and so forth. They throw away tons and tons of pizza. Away. So I'm like, okay, cool. And I'm like, if I don't show up, just charge me 20 bucks. I don't care. But I'm showing up. So I show up down there, order my pizza. Um, there was a lady in front of me, clearly stopped member, another gentleman, and I was like, he's like, yeah, I order. I said, oh, I'm good, man. You're just, yeah, you're here, you're working, it's not a big deal. I'm here on vacation, I think it'll matter an extra couple minutes if you order before me or after me. And then he's like, okay, cool, whatever stuff. So I ordered, um, he ordered, we went to sit down, and I'm chatting a little, I kind of sat over there by them, waiting for their food as well as mine. And um, not gonna say exactly what they do, because the, their jobs are extremely like so if I mention this and stuff and I say like yo this is the you know da 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 you're gonna know exactly who it is there's only one of them that does this so and we got chatting a little bit and stuff talking about their jobs and how they built the ship and different little cool things and where they're from and whatnot and the one the one's from Kansas City Missouri I'm like cool I got cousins Lee Summit and stuff and we chat a little about that and stuff and whatnot and how it was growing up in that environment and is the situation he's kinda of talked about how this now it was cool. The other lady we talked to she's from like Queensland Australia um, talked to her quite a bit great people awesome time and I told them I said yeah drunks have been so 17 we were talking about something happened and then eventually as we were chatting we talked about a lot of cool things I said I'm not the guy that's talking about the weather and stuff I want to talk about real shit are you guys okay with that and they're like oh yeah we love talking about real shit because nobody ever talks about real shit so we had a good chat um, your pizza showed up and I said I'm going to move away so you can eat your pizza in peace and have a great time so even as drunk as I was I remember like hey this is now their their pizza time I'm going to get the hell out of here leave them alone so we had a good conversation and I would take a lull in the, in the conversation as we were waiting for pizza, and then they would ask me questions also of kind of that were leading into more of the deeper conversations, which told me they wanted, they were willing to talk about that and happy to talk about it. Talked about how much it's different working on this boat than other boats and stuff as a staff member, and a lot of things we, we were talking about the fear of this boat, this ship not making it when there's only less than 700 people on the boat. The boat can't afford it if it continues that way. We have to get the boat, the boat filled out, so at least one's boat. It's much more fun than a lot of this snobby uh, travel. Um, reporters are saying there's no kids.
kids. There's no kids. That's the best part. It is what it is. So, yeah, I went ahead and said, held it. Um, from there, headed back to the room. My pizza. Um, everything's great. Found my room. All that kind of stuff. Got there. Good wine for pizza. I had to look cool. I even put Parmesan cheese on it for us. I hate Parmesan cheese. But I knew she was going to want it. So, with that, we got to, you know, eat pizza, talking, joking, laughing, having a fun time, watching Ghostbusters, the new one with the kids. Wasn't paying a horrible amount of attention, so it's weird. It's kind of whatever and getting ready so i know it's gonna be a rough day um because right now technically it's already the sixth and it's we got the boat a little bit and she's still not up yet so i'm gonna get off this thing this is 20 minutes long already plus and i've been talking for too long um i finally had to sleep um it is what it is but i gotta go get her up and see how she does so anyway talk to you guys tomorrow have yourself a safe wonderful day thanks for watching